Welcome to the Guiding Brands Podcast with your host and chief guide, Karen Vick. This is the podcast for service-based small businesses who want to get a handle on their marketing so they can attract and gain new customers. Hello, everyone. Uh, Welcome to the Guiding Brands Podcast. I am so happy to have um, this special guest in the studio today. Um, She is someone that I met through an organization that we're both uh, members of, uh, the Jamaican Women of Florida, and um, she saved my life (laughs) a year ago for our annual conference. She stepped in and assisted with um, social media marketing. You're going to really enjoy this conversation because, as always, I want to bring you value, bring you uh, tools and resources that you can use in um, making your marketing efforts work for you so that you can get some results and grow your business. And so today, um, my guest is actually an expert in the event planning space, both virtually and um, in-person events. And so we're going to we're going to be talking to her about, you know, how we can leverage this platform or this method of um, marketing uh, in, in our small businesses, you know, to benefit our marketing. All right. And so without further ado, my guest is Natasha Wright. She is the chief experience curator of Diamond Butterfly Agency. Her agency specializes in crafting transformative events that blend strategic thinking with soulful experience for cities, organizations, and businesses, both in person and in hybrid formats. Her clients include organizations like the NFL Play Football, and she's done major work for Black History Month celebrations. Uh, Natasha uses her 10, 10 plus years of marketing experience to ensure Every event that she is involved in not only captivates, but also delivers tangible results for her clients and her audience and their audience. Uh, Natasha is also the host of a podcast, an Event Gems podcast, yeah, where she provides her audience with strategies for event industry from event industry experts and entrepreneurs um, to help her audience maximize the power of uh, business events. She is also the graduate of Florida International University and holds a degree in uh, psychology and certifications in digital marketing and events management from Miami-Dade College and Florida Atlantic University. I mean, we're going to go on. This, this, you know, there's a lot. I, I hope I don't leave out too much, but I had to kind of trim this thing. I got it. I got it. (laughs) You know, yeah, she's an award winner. She's just an all round amazing woman and a really good human being that I've had the pleasure of knowing for the last few years. And, and so Natasha, I know I, I said a lot, but there's a lot more to you. I don't know. What else do you want to share with the audience about what it is that you do and who you are? <clears throat> um yeah I feel like that was high level <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing that um, yeah you know every, every time I look at my body I'm like who's this <laughs> I know the feeling yeah so it's pretty cool to to hear someone else read that uh, but overall um I, I think you pretty much captured everything in okay. my bio um I would just say that you know for me I sort of like stumbled into entrepreneurship. So so that's why I'm saying, you know, when I read the bio or I read things that I've done or when I reread those things, I think to myself, oh, wait, you know, how did this happen? You know, yeah. um, because it was more so like just knowing that I wanted to be an entrepreneur or a business owner, but kind of stumbling into it mm-hmm. um, just based on like people that I collaborated with. Or even when I hosted my own, my first event, which was more so like a calling to do it, it was more like my spirit was like, you need to host this event, you need to host this event, mm-hmm. you know, and me being scared, nervous and, and anxious about even doing that in the first place. So to see that I took that chance on myself and kind of stepped out of my comfort zone and then, you know, a whole new world just opened up to me. Um, awesome. I didn't think that was possible for me at the time. 
So awesome. yeah, awesome. And awesome. So I'd like to share for anybody else who was on the fence, <laughs> awesome. on the fence about doing something. Do it scared anyway, like I do am right anyway. now. <laughs> yeah, do it scared anyways. <laughs> Yeah, I did read that um, throughout, you know, when I was doing background on the podcast, you know, on this interview, I actually did read that um, you were encouraged by just people who cared about you, people in your circle to actually just go ahead and, and try it. And you did. And it, you know, it led to what you're doing now, um, hosting some really major events in South Florida. And I've, I've, participated in some virtual events that you've hosted and managed and really flawless. So, so kudos to you, you know, and thank you so, and much, thank you. And thank you so much for agreeing to, to, you know, jump on and have this conversation and, and enlighten the audience, you know, hopefully they're going to take something away from this that they can use in their business. And so with that, I actually, you know, the spin that you give to, to event, um, to events is that it can be helpful for your business and helpful in your marketing. And I never considered event planning in that way. I never thought about it that way. So why do you believe that event hosting is an important marketing strategy for small businesses? Um, so, you know, it was so interesting. I was having a, a conversation with my friend yesterday and I was saying to him that um, I want to do more either like workshops or teaching around events. Like, I feel like I've been in the trenches doing the work. And so now it's like, all right, well, everything that I've learned, like I, I would like to be able to share more with business owners. So thank you, Karen, for being a conduit mm -hmm. for me sharing more <laughs> about this message, uh, because that is the lens that I view events through. Like, for me, events are marketing. And if you're a business owner, you should be, um, that's the lens that you should view your events through, whether or not it's a workshop, whether or not it's just a pop-up thing, or it's a client event, or it's a fun event. It's always mm -hmm. th viewing events through the lens of marketing. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I've always had that perspective is because of, you know, I was sharing about me hosting my first event. Um, so, you know, and I kind of give you the backstory to that. So I talked about how, you know, I felt this calling to do this event. Um, I was a part of another business before, you know, that was a successful. And so we ended up closing down. Uh, but as a result of me hosting this event, I decided to, because I figured that I had to have a business mm -hmm. to house the event. Right. So I was like, right. oh, like I, I got to come up with a business name um to, to house this event but i had no idea about what services i was going to offer anything the only thing i knew is what i just needed to do this event and so i'm just using the business as a house for it right um, and so as a result of me doing the event uh people started reaching out to me they wanted to collaborate with, with me they were asking me to work with them on their own events um to partner with them um i had people come reach out to me to help them market their own events and, you know, or just people wanted to be connected with me and say, hey, at some future point in time, we should we should do something together. And then a business so, was born. <laughs> and then a, and then a business was born because I had no idea what right. I was. You know, I remember my friend asking me that time. She's like, OK, so what services do you provide? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, I have no idea what services I provide. The only thing I know I was supposed to do this event and then everything was just kind of like came from there. But um, primarily what I started doing was was helping other business owners market their events because they saw how I was marketing my own event. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just based on me just being like hungry and like, all right, I'm doing this thing. Like, mm -hmm. I need to have the people. Yes. People need to be here. You know what yeah. I mean? So I was very aggressive in my marketing efforts for that. And so other people, even though they didn't necessarily attend the event, they saw how Yes. I promoted it. And so they reached out to me for, for, for me to help them with their events. And so that's why that's my unique perspective on events, because I saw what it did for me. And mm -hmm. I saw what it and I see what it, do, it does for my clients. And when you approach it in that strategic way. Mm -hmm. um, and I like that you said, um, you know, it doesn't, you know, because the first instinct when you hear events, you're thinking it needs to be an auditorium filled with people, mm -hmm. um, you know, that you're renting a huge event space, but it can be as simple as hosting a, a, a workshop, you know, or um, speaking at a chamber of commerce, lunch and learn, you know, something, you know, where you are actually 
able to share your knowledge or share something that the community needs, your audience needs. So I like that, you know, it could be a pop-up event, like you said, um, a, a webinar, any, 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 anything. Like yeah. That, a networking right? event, a anything yes. that yeah. you're doing that is connected to your business. It's, it's an, yeah. And, and, and you're right. A lot of times when people think about events, they're thinking about a conference. Like it has to be this huge thing. And so mm -hmm. what ends up happening is they, they think, oh, I want to do this event. It has to be huge. It has to have a mm -hmm. hundred people. It has to have yeah. 200 people. You know what I mean? But it really doesn't. Yeah. Um, and so if you're strategic about the people who you're inviting, you know, making sure that uh, it's a target demographic, if you're strategic about how you're, you're, you're partnering with other people, you can still get the results that you want you know, without it having to be this huge thing, because that mm -hmm. huge thing takes a lot of money and energy exactly. and time. <laughs> exactly. You know? so exactly. You want to make sure that it's the right move for you at the right time in your yeah. business. I think we also often get caught up in seeing other people, people's events hosted, and we're thinking that we need to have, you know, an event of that quality or that standard or whatever, but you, you got to start someplace. You know, mm -hmm. you have to start yeah. someplace. Yeah. 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 So, so what are some of the benefits that you've seen your um, clients receive from hosting events, whether it be webinars or in-person events? What are some um, of the benefits? I mean, for me, it's, you know, number one is marketing for your business. Number two, mm -hmm. it's, you know, really about building your brand. And this podcast is talking about guiding brands. And so it's, it's, it's letting people know what your brand yeah. stands for, um, getting having them, giving them an opportunity to interact with your brand. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of times, a lot of us are on social media, right? So um, I yes. can see you do a live or I can see you post something on social media. But when I come to your event, that's that's the opportunity for me to actually experience you mm -hmm. and say, I wonder if this, if, if, if the persona that I see online is aligned with the persona that I'm seeing in person, right? Mm -hmm. Like, do I feel like I trust this person? So that's an opportunity for you to build your brand, for you to build your thought leadership. Um, if there is a particular topic that you um, want to be talking about, then craft the event around that particular topic mm -hmm. so that when people see that, you know, because when you're, when you're promoting your event, you're not just, even though you want people to come, mm -hmm. you're also thinking about the people who might not come, but they'll see it's the true. fire, right? Or they'll see, they'll see what it is that you're doing. Um, so, so with that being said, if people are seeing, okay, well, she's talking about build how to build your brand, you know, like they, I, there are so many people who they said, I don't, I didn't know that you did that. Right? right. And sometimes until you start promoting, promoting something or, 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 or now you have this event where now you have, you're, you're, you're pushing out content more and you're getting a higher visibility on it. Mm -hmm. um, that's an opportunity for you to um, increase your thought leadership around a particular topic. Brand or, awareness. Or within your, exactly. Mm. Brand awareness in your industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing is, is, is collaboration. Like I talked about before, mm -hmm. like that was an unexpected thing for me around hosting the events. Um, is that people want to collaborate with you, um, you know, collaboration, partnerships, and um, also sponsorships. So, um, you know, sometimes I think people focus too much on butts in seats, you know, mm -hmm. like the actual people who are in the room. And of course, yes, you want those people to, to be in the room. You want them to purchase. You want to be able to make your money back. You know what I mean? You want to make, be able to make some profit from the event. But you also want to think about the um, external mm. um, world uh, of that event too, and how that could play out over the long term of your business so career. Good. You think long term, long, yeah. you know, the long game, you yes. know, yeah, and the, exactly. think about the the resulting effects, you know, mm -hmm. from from this. Okay, so yeah. I know you talked a bit. You talked about you know being in person and um, being able to interact with the audience and things like that, but. COVID brought in a whole new world for so many people. I remember, you know, Jay Wolf, Jamaican woman of Florida, it was a week before our annual conference in 2020 when the world stopped. Mm -hmm. And my first thought was, we got to do this. We still have to do this. And let's try to do it virtually. And we were the first ones in South Florida to actually host an event of that type. You know, and if I had any good sense, I would have done what you did. And parlayed that into, you know, <laughs> into, a a, 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 into a service, but I didn't, it was, it took a lot. It was a lot of work because yeah. we did, it, it was over six weeks and we did three events every other week for a six week period. 
and just, you know, and there's a lot that goes into it that a lot of people aren't aware of. However, um, for those people who may think, you know, I don't know if I want to do an in-person event. Do you think that they can get the same benefits? Can people get the same benefits from hosting a, a, a virtual event? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent, hundred percent. Yeah, um, yeah, and okay. you did an amazing job with that, Karen, because I, I wasn't a part of it um, mm-hmm. at the time. I wasn't mm-hmm. a, a participant, but I've seen the replay. So, oh, and oh, I, really? I, yeah. So I know the amount of work, and especially the platform that you were using at the yes. time. I know the amount of work that happens on the back end, like you yeah. said, that people do not see, um, just just by virtue of them not even knowing what mm-hmm. it takes to do yes. that, you know, so yeah. kudos to you for being able to, to pivot quickly, um, because I know a lot of events at that time, like they were like, okay, we're canceled. Yeah. <laughs> you know, see, see you next year, hopefully. So yeah. that's yeah. great and that we, you were able we to We ended up, that. and then, you know, here's a thing too, that the audience may appreciate. So in that event, it was in the in-person event was a paid event and we pivoted to a free event and we ended up reaching hundreds of people. I mean, Every one of those sessions, we had at least six to 700 people from all over the world attending. And um, our donations to the organization increased, you know, and we actually were able to see a greater return than we would have, you know, in the in-person event, which is amazing. And a lot Mm -hmm. of people, you know, don't think about that, you know, when they're planning these things, it's, it, you know, there's also reach, you know, yeah. and you talk about hybrid events and hybrid events would mean you're combining both virtual and in person. Right. And that's yeah. a whole nother set of challenges within itself. But yeah. 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 That's, that's a, that's a whole other beast. In it, <laughs> yeah. In of itself. Yeah. Right. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times what ends up happening is with the hybrid event, it's just like, Oh, well, let's just point the camera um, on the stage. And yes. There, there you go for the virtual audience, right? Yes. But, yeah. but if you really want to maximize the power of a, of a, of a hybrid event, it has to, it's it's really two separate events. It's really the in person event that's happening, and then have mm-hmm. the virtual experience. Because- mm-hmm. Yeah, I lost your audio for a second. Are you able to hear me now? Yes, I'm yes. hearing you. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, attendees who are virtual. Yes, they're not there, but they want to feel like they are also a part of the experience, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so you were asking about if if virtual events can have the same impact as in-person events. And I'll say 100%, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I recently worked with a client and initially when she came to me, she wanted to do something in person. But for her, it was, it was her transitioning from a new career, um, from... From a new, from a different industry into a new industry, and so she mm. wanted to use the event as a brand building opportunity to let people know, like, hey, this is what I'm talking about. She went. Her goal was to be is to be hired as a speaker and for people to, um, you know, uh, be a part of her coaching sessions, right, um, mm-hmm. or participate in her coaching sessions. And so, based on her transition, I felt that to go in person, right would probably not be the best move for her at that point. And and I'll say why, because it's really her like now building up a new audience. And so it becomes Mm -hmm. a heavier lift to do it in person. It's more expensive to do it in person. And so you can um, use the the lower um, threshold of doing a virtual event to really build up your audience, build up your brand until Mm -hmm. you, you know, host something in person. Not to say that you Mm -hmm. always have to do it that way, but you can certainly it worked for her. It. Yeah, it worked yeah. for her. And 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 the end result of it, she was like, Oh my God, you know, this is so great. Like it like the event did what it was supposed to do. So awesome. you, know, you can you can definitely use the virtual platforms, but you could use a virtual event to do the same thing that you would do in person, but you still have to make sure that you have whatever your event promises, the the virtual audience is getting that. Not because you because it's a virtual event means that you're just gonna you know, just treat it as a throwaway event. You know, right. you still put the same amount of time and effort and thoughtfulness into the virtual experience, just like I was talking about with the hybrid event. You get you give that same level of thoughtfulness into the virtual experience that you would have if you were in person. You know, yeah. that could mean that um, 
as opposed to people just coming on and you being like, hi, everyone, how are you? <laughs> you have like a countdown graphic with music playing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So you're already setting the, the mood. You're setting the, the mm-hmm. experience. Um, maybe you could do like some giveaways. You know, how can you make it fun? How can you make it an experience for them as opposed to it just being... A, They're just watching uh, a screen, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and now, now it's just a webinar, right? As opposed to a virtual event, right? Right. right. Now it's just a talking head type of situation, um, where it's one person, where's the, the the host talking to people, as opposed to it being a two way interactive experience. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so that's what you you want to be mindful of, and then after that, a lot of times what ends up happening is people aren't leveraging the the videos from their virtual events, so the the the, the virtual event is done, you know, there are no, there's nothing to say that the event happened on the social <laughs> media pages, right? Mm-hmm. So with an in-person event, you might have had a photographer, so now you're like posting those pictures, right? Mm-hmm. You could do the same exact thing for your virtual event. Exactly. Like how, are you, how are you leveraging that post experience? Because guess what? That's going to that's gonna create um, buzz. The momentum, buzz and mm-hmm. momentum for your next event, right? Mm-hmm. So you can you could still do a recap video with those Zoom videos, you know what I mean? Clip them up, put them together, add some music over it, find the best the best snippets and post it on your social media let Mm -hmm. people know that this thing happened if they didn't get a chance to see it um the other thing that we do with that particular client is that we made the replay an event Mm -hmm. so if you didn't show up live we were we we hyped it up again one more time for the people one more time for the people in the back who did not see who did not experience it you know what i mean nice and we create a flyer and stamp like replay on it mm-hmm. and it became like a whole other thing like people are like oh yeah i gotta see this i need to be there and we're like it was last week but whatever yes run it run it back again right but i want to so, tell you and what mm-hmm. i'm hearing too is um the marketing hat on me now says seo because now yes. she's driving traffic to her website yes. you know more eyeballs google is paying attention to the fact that there's traffic going to the website and so on and so yep. yeah so it's it's it comes full circle and yes, um absolutely. it all works yeah they're awesome and, it sounds and like on her works. youtube page too yes you know? yes yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah yeah all right so so you know knowing that um we can do you know these kinds of events and we touched on that we touched on you know, different types of events that we can actually do um, as small business owners. What are some of the, some, can you give, give us some creative ways in which we can actually, you know, uh, promote our events, you know, that we're putting on out there? What are some, I know you do some amazing graphics. Um, your use of social media is very um, unique. I remember last year, as I mentioned earlier, Natasha came in and saved the day for our marketing of the event and she created a a grid of a timeline of um the the organization on uh instagram with these graphics that just created like a tiled effect and it told a story you know i thought that was really really cool so you know can you share something else that maybe the audience can actually use yes maybe a tip something Um, unique outside of outside of social media i would say so even you know that what i just shared you know Mm -hmm. running running the thing back again like that yeah that's on the end of the event but it also serves as a mark as marketing for you you know your next event right Mm -hmm. it kind of like it's, it's it's like warming people up and like nurturing them and having them come into your ecosystem prior to you even have it the mm-hmm. next event. So True. think about what are some assets that you already have or things that you've already done that you could, you know, leverage for you to promote your previous event. Because sometimes we just start from like where we're at with the flyer, right? Mm-hmm. Or we start from where we're at with um, <laughs> with maybe like a drop video from the speaker, but th- from the speakers. But think about like what, you know, like you were talking about with that campaign, it was telling the story of the 10 year anniversary of, mm-hmm. of J-Wolf. So what have you done before that you can use to yeah. tell the story of how mm-hmm. you even got here to host this event, mm-hmm. to, to, to put this thing together, mm-hmm. right? Like I yeah. talked about how I, I fumbled my way through entrepreneurship and started a business, didn't know what it was, you know, like mm-hmm. if I were to, 
um, do an event that is maybe empowering women to follow their dreams or their passion. Like that's a story. Could use that's a story to I would, tell. Yeah, that I would incorporate, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of like my own transformation. Um, or and so you could think about well, what 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 is it in your story that will that will resonate with the transformation or the event promise that people are going to get. Um, the other thing is uh, what I've done before is challenges. So mm -hmm. um, you could pull out. And, 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 and it becomes a little bit more work, but, but it brings in people who are the target, the target demographic for that particular event. So we've done like a four day challenge or a five day challenge. And essentially that's um, just popping up um, for an hour a day. So mm -hmm. for example, if it's, let's say it's, uh, you know, you could just pull out like once, but if you have five topics within your event that you're going to be discussing, just pull out one of them. So for example, if you pull out the health and fitness one out of the event and then mm -hmm. you do a health and fitness challenge. And then within those four or five days, you're talking about, you know, how to be mindful, how to mm -hmm. work out, what are some proper ways that you can eat. It's an hour a day, but what ends up happening is that you're bringing in people who probably wouldn't have registered for the event right away, but mm -hmm. you're nurturing them and you're building your email list, right? Teasing and, them. And, you're teasing them, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty much, um, and and you're giving them an opportunity to to once again, when we talk about like experience you as a brand, as a person, as the event host. Mm -hmm. um, whereas they might have seen the flyer and they're like, well, I don't know if I want to go to that, or it's too mm -hmm. much money, or whatever the case may be. Now they're in your um, in your ecosystem, or what I like to call they're in in your brand universe, and it's like, oh well, I really like this person. You know what? Let me go ahead and mm -hmm. register for for, for That's this event. That's a good event. point. That's a yeah. good point. Yeah, yeah, and you can do challenges um, through email. You can do challenges um, even through social media. Mm -hmm. There are tools that integrate with Facebook that will allow you to actually um, host like um, giveaways and things like that, you know, through the platform. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. For sure. I like that. So, so I know that, you know, it's, it's all good. And there's somebody out there in the audience sitting there thinking, okay, I don't have the technical expertise. I don't have all of these the ability to do the things that you're talking about. I'm a one woman shop or I, um, I have a very small, you know, business and I'm, or I'm just starting out. So can you advise us on some of the pitfalls to, 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 to avoid, you know, some of the things that we should be considering when you are thinking about hosting an event of any type or size? Uh, well, number one, I'm going to say, if you're thinking about doing an event, please reach out to me and hire me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> if not, yeah. Yeah. if not, then, um, you know, some of the things that you want to, so you talked about pitfalls, but I'll, I'll think I'll say like some of the things that you want to make sure that you're considering is, um, you might have the event vision, um, but you have to think about, well, how does, how does this event play into my overall business objective mm -hmm. like how am i not just hosting an event for the sake of hosting an event especially if you're doing it for your business it needs to it needs to be a part of whatever goals you already have set in, mm -hmm. within your business right um so if that is i want to sell these particular services or i want to you know earn more money or you know whatever it is it needs to be a part of that mm -hmm. um and so you want to make sure that, that that those two things are aligned and you're not just let me just do a brunch. Right. Right. But right. it's like, okay, well, how does the brunch serve what it is that where you're going in your business? Mm -hmm. So, so that's one of the pitfalls I see. The other part is, and we talked about this before, is that a lot of times um, business owners, when they're hosting events, aren't looking at it from a marketing perspective. Um, you always have to shape. I don't know. I, I was going to say shift, shift your vision, but I was going to, mm -hmm. but really it's around like, look at everything that you're doing through, through, through how does this, help to market my business. Um, the third I would say is, you know, you have to have an event promise. Mm -hmm. um, so people know that this is what I can expect when I come to this. This is you're, you're telling them this is what you can expect when you come to this event. And this is what you, this is what they actually get, mm -hmm. you know, cause one thing is you, you could say, yeah, you're going to get this X, Y, Z. Um, but then when you come to the event, you don't X, get Y, that. Z wasn't delivered. Mm -hmm. And so what ends up happening is there is some incongruency. And I'm like, I don't really trust that she said or he mm -hmm. said what he's going to do. 
Yeah. Because he told me this is what it was going to be. And I showed up and this is not what it is. Yeah. Like, the, you know, the, people don't trust you as much anymore. Yeah, they might work with you, but but it's it's the event is is also like around cultivating that 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 trust and that bond. Right. <laughs> so make sure that that's delivered. It's funny you said that I actually a few weeks ago. Um, I saw something that was um, put out there by the BBC. Um, uh, somebody was hosting a huge event for kids and, you know, um, promotion was amazing online, but they got there and it was like cut out, cardboard cutouts of characters and things like that. And mm -hmm. parents were upset, you know, so, so yeah. Yeah, because I mean, it feels that's like they switch. Yeah. yeah, but it feels yeah. it feels like bait and switch, right? You're like, oh, yeah. you told me you told me that you told me that by the by the end of this workshop, by the end of this four hour workshop, I'm gonna have my 90 day content strategy mm -hmm. worked out, right? And then I come and we only glossed over like yes. what a content strategy is. Yeah. That's a huge disconnect, you know? Yeah. Because I know that I don't have a lot of time. And so I'm thinking that if I come to this workshop, I'm going to have that done. It's actually me saying I'm carving out this time to do this thing that's important to me. Especially if you pay for it. <laughs> Especially if you pay for it. Yeah. Even yeah. more so if you pay yeah. for it, right? Yeah, I'd be exactly. upset. Because it's yeah. not only about money, it's about time, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to show up for this two-hour thing if, and you told me that this is what I was going to get, and I don't get it. Yeah. So, so what I'm hearing you say, it's, you know, be, be sure that you have a goal set, a clear goal, you know, what yes. it is that you want from this, um, yes. you know, how does it benefit your marketing, you know, yes. and, and thirdly setting expectations, not just yes. for yourself, but also for your, your audience, you know, yes. make sure that you set those expectations and you meet them. You know, yes. and if you, and if you're not sure, you know, reach out to me or reach out to Natasha and to get some guidance on how to actually, you know, um, craft your, your, your marketing or your events, the content that you're creating so that you can deliver, you know, on that promise that you make. Cause that's essentially what it is. We're making a promise to people when we put ourselves out there saying that we're going to do X, Y, Z, you know, 100%. so yeah. And this brings me to the next point is that yeah, you should have goals but you should also be able to measure them because you don't want to go spending time, money, and energy creating an event. And then you're not sure what you got out of it. You mm -hmm. don't know if you met those goals or mm -hmm. you never even had the goals to begin with. And it's like, you know, what, what just happened, you know, mm -hmm. and then you may get disillusioned and not want to do an event again. You yes. know, so, so, so are there other things that people should be looking for when they're trying to measure the results of the event, you know, besides the number of people that attend, you know, what, what other things should they use as measuring sticks? Um, well, as measuring sticks. So, uh, we talked about how, to, well, how does this event uh, align with my overall like business goal? Right. So mm -hmm. then if it's all right, well, I want to, um, I want to make more money within my business then, and you're saying this event, your, your expectation or your goal is this event is going to make you $5,000. Right. So then there, there is a monetary mm -hmm. like measure, right. Okay. Did this, did this event actually make me right. that money? Right. Um, so it's, it's, it's the, the, the people who are there, the, it could also another, um, measure that you could use is um like actual satisfaction so depending on what type of event it is right so let's say you um you hosted a um a brand launch or a grand opening or something like that and then you send out a customer survey what were your thoughts on this event did you enjoy this event you know did, do you, how likely are you to purchase from us have mm. you purchased from a, did you purchase from us at the event so those are some questions that you can ask that's going to gather information for you to say all right well so, you know, some persons uh, purchase, they said that they will be more likely to purchase. These are some people that I can actually like continue to, to, to nurture, or what are some things that I could do in the future to make sure that, you know, their expectations are met. So it could just be your own, like, um, what is the experience that people got, or it could mm -hmm. just be your own sort of like market research, right. For the future. Mm -hmm. um, another measure is, or, or just overall satisfaction could be a measure for you. Um, 
I think that those are pretty much, you know, outside of like the your financial goals, your attendee goals, mm-hmm. um, your business goals could be completely different. You know, for someone who might be a coach or they have a program, it could be, well, I have 10 people who actually signed up as a result right. of being hosting this thing. Um, so it, it really depends on what your specific goals are for you to figure out like what those key markers mm-hmm. are. Um, and then based on, I mean, based on the specific goals that you have, then that's how you'll figure out like, what those key so. Yeah. And if you're hosting, um, uh, from my experience, if you're hosting a virtual event, you want to mm-hmm. try to use a platform that can give you some data, It'll give you some mm-hmm. feedback on how many people registered, how many people actually attended the event in person, um, mm-hmm. and how many people stayed for the entire event. You know, those are things that you know, you want to use now for the next event that you plan. You know, mm-hmm. m- maybe there's something that you need to adjust in in the way that you did your presentation, the way that you marketed, you know, and and yeah, so I like the idea of the of the sur- of surveying your customers that did attend. Mm-hmm. And um even even if they um were only there for part of the time, at least you can get some information from them. You can, you can, you know, why did you leave early? You know, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Any data is, is always good data. And yeah, like you're, you're talking about with the virtual events. I, 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 that's, that's why sometimes I love <laughs> virtual events because it's, 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 um, the, you get data easy, yeah, more easily and more, readily. I was, I was yeah. just going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Data is available more easily and readily than, yeah. you know, it being like an in-person event. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you can assess that, but as a, but, but as you were talking about that, I was just thinking that it should just be standard as, as something that people do mm-hmm. to track those things, right. Mm-hmm. Across the board, um, just, just have, um, a document and for all of your events. So you're just tracking that information. So, you, and if it's something that you do, um, multiple times, and at least like you have a reference point for right. For some of those data, like you were saying, how many people actually registered, how many people actually showed up, how many people like actually um, landed on the page and converted, you know, mm-hmm. to sign up. So I feel like like having those types of numbers, um, like historical numbers could definitely help support you as you uh, move forward. But mm-hmm. even um, just having that. So that's for the virtual event, but, but even just having that for your in-person events, too. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and a huge part, what, and what I usually see end up happening is that a lot of times, um, people don't put a budget together, right? So if we're just mm. talking about like from day, from a data perspective, like, you know, having your budget to, uh, I'm sorry, not from a data perspective, but from a pitfall perspective, which your earlier question, yes. um, I didn't mention this, but it's, you know, putting up together a budget. Yes. Um, so a lot of times it's just like, all right, we'll spend it as we're going. And it's like, you don't even know if you made money right. in the hole, like how far in the hole you are, how much profit you made because you weren't tracking those numbers. But that's one of the first things. Once you have the vision, you got the goals. Mm-hmm. Then the next, the, the third thing that you want to do is make sure that you put together a budget to so that you can know like what are the constraints for some of the things that you're doing and that you can fully maximize um, from a financial perspective the event that you're hosting. So true. So true. Because if you don't, you know, it's just like everything else, you'll think that you have all this money and you just keep spending, spending, yeah. spending. And before you know it, you know, you, you're like, wow, did I really spend that much? And now you're starting to worry about whether or not you're going to get it back, you know? But, um, but then it also yeah. says like, well, did, did that make, did that make sense? Exactly. Right? I'm saying yeah. I want to make $5,000, yeah. but when I look at my budget, you know, uh, it's, it's 6,000. So maybe, right. I, maybe I can't host it at that space. Mm-hmm. Maybe I can't offer food, you know, mm-hmm. maybe I can't use this particular platform. Because mm-hmm. some of those platforms went, you know, for virtual events, they could get pricey. Yes. So, so, you know, that, that kind of informs the decisions that you make, you know, once you have that budget that have that budget set. Um, and then you really think about, well, well, can I afford to do this right now? And right? that brings to mind, Natasha, research. Mm-hmm. We yes. never talked about, you got to do research, right? Mm-hmm. Before mm-hmm. you go into an event planning, you know, you have to mm-hmm. research the tools, the platforms, the venue, um, all of that before you, mm-hmm. you know, if you're going to have speakers, not have speakers, it's just going to mm-hmm. be you, all those things um, make a difference in in creating your budget. So yeah, pretty yeah. cool. 
Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and, and it's funny because one of the questions I have here is actually um, about creating budget friendly, you know, um, events for small businesses. And I think we kind of touched on that a little bit because an event can, you can do anything from just going on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram and doing a live, you know, mm -hmm. that's an event, you know, mm -hmm. to um, hosting a, a an event hall, an auditorium or something, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to doing, I've seen people do things on on ships on cruises and things like yes. you know there's all yes. kinds of stuff that you can do and when clubhouse was popping they had clubhouse events too yes. this is just like yes. audio, audio version events yeah only. yeah and you can do that on linkedin you can have an mm -hmm. audio only event on linkedin so mm -hmm. you know those are some of the budget friendly ways that you can do this but again i think it comes down to goals what is it that you want to get out of this what are your what are your long term goals? What are your short term term goals? And what method is going to bring you the the most um, bang for your buck? Then you know, and your buck yeah. could could be your time. It doesn't have to be just dollars and cents. It could exactly. also be the time. It takes a yeah. I think exactly. I answered my own question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 to, but to add to that, you know, mm -hmm. it's I, I think a lot of times. Um, what I see happen is that business owners um, put pretty over profitable, mm, right? Good point. Yes. Um, and so you got to be measured in the approach. Like it's like I want it to look great. I want it to look beautiful, right? I want to have these nice grand centerpieces. I want to have these balloon arches. You know, mm -hmm. the flowers, all those things, right? Uh, but did, did that spending that money doing those things give you as much of an impact for what the event could be versus mm -hmm. like you just showing up and getting to the nitty gritty uh, meat of the content and perhaps just having one little balloon thing? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes I, I, I see um, business owners like overdo it with the pretty, uh, which impacts the, 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 the financial bottom line. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're not. And, and, and as a result, like the event was a strategic enough. Yes. You know, yes. so you want to, you want to, you want to put those things in place. And, you know, once you have your budget in place, like that's going to help you inform you as to how much you could charge. Yeah. Because a lot of times what ends up happening is we say, all right, I think, I think a hundred dollars is good. I think, I think, I think people would pay, would pay a hundred dollars, right? Yes. Not knowing that if you charge a hundred dollars, you're not even making baseline mm -hmm. for what it is. It's not that covering you your costs. It's, yes. it's not covering your costs at all. Mm -hmm. It's not covering your costs at all. And so unless you have some other way of, you know, upselling on the back mm -hmm. end and, and, and that means that you have to make sure that you, you are super targeted in the people that you're bringing in, that those people are the people that will really buy from you. So you're cool with like losing on the front end because, you know, you got to make up some money on the back end. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so those are some of the things that, um, yeah, I, I, I guess I could go on and on about yeah, it. I know. <laughs> I know. And I guess one other way to mitigate that, and you could tell me a little bit if I'm wrong, is to, um, to get um, partnerships, you know, collaborate yes. with other people. Yes. You know, can 100%. you expand on that a little bit? Uh, so you're talking about in I terms, mean, in of, terms like, of cost, you know, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. leveraging, you know, your friends and family, business partners, business associates, you know, you know people, you know, Vo uh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Volunteers. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. I've done events where a lot of things were, were things that were sponsored, but I also think it's like, well, you know, you know, people reach out, like I've seen people reach out to me and they're like, Oh, will you sponsor this thing? And I'm like, how does that benefit me? Me. Yes. <laughs> right. Like how, how, do, how does me sponsoring that event benefit me? And there were times where I was like, all right, well, it could be a right fit, right? Which mm -hmm. I've done in the past, but then realize that no, it really wasn't a good fit. Mm. So if you are partnering with people, if you are if you are looking for sponsorship, you want to make sure that the sponsors are, are are in some way aligned 
like your audience is aligned with that sponsor's um, audience or that partner is is aligned with with what a partner's mm-hmm. audience is, is aligned with your partner's audience because that's really what it comes down to right i want to make sure that the people who are in this room are the people that i want to connect with mm-hmm. um so you want to make sure that you're reaching out to the right people first of all because you know, then it becomes a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't want there to be a situation where it doesn't feel like a win-win where it's like, I'm just like, oh, let me take your money, but there's no value here for you. You know, and and vice versa. I don't want to be a part of a situation where I'm spending my money and there is no value there that's Mm -hmm. coming back for me. Especially mm-hmm. as a small business owner, every yes. every dollar, every, do- every dime <laughs> is, imp- is important. You know, it's impo- yeah, yeah, it's important. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can certainly leverage partnerships, but you just definitely want to make sure that the partners are yeah. aligned with the um, target audience of the people that you're going to have at your event. Okay, very cool. So, so um, if someone in the audience wanted to host their first event whether it be virtual or in person, what are the first steps that they should take? What, what are, If you could name like three to five things that um, they should be thinking about before. And, and we touched on a lot of that. A budget is important, your goals mm-hmm. and so on. But they're freaking out. They hear all of that. You know, they know they it would be helpful. And But the thought of doing it is just like, oh, it, it, it's, it's, it's intimidating to, th- to say the least, you know? So what uh-huh. are, what's some advice that you would have for someone wanting to create one, an event? Um, so, so I'll say, all right, well, you have your vision, you know, mm-hmm. what is, what is, what is the vision that you, you have for the event? Um, and, and, and that's a very like fluffy creative process. So that <laughs> part feels good, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what does it look like? What does it feel like? What do I want people to, to, to really experience? So mm-hmm. just kind of go into the vision of what that looks like. Cause that's a fun, that's a fun part anyways. Right. right. Uh, and just really, you know, write down like what, what are those things that you would want? What are those things that you, you would want people to be left with? What, what, what is the experience that you'd like for them to have? And just kind of go through that vision and process. Once you've gone through the vision and fun part of it, then you're going to say, all right, well, what are the, the goals that I have for this event? And I'll say, pick at least two goals. Right. You don't want to overwhelm yourself. So you just mm-hmm. pick two goals. What are those two goals that I have for this event? Once you pick those two goals, the next thing you're going to do is what are the objectives? And the objectives are simply what are the steps that I'm going to take in order for me to meet these goals? I want one of my goals is I want to have 50 people in the room. What are the steps that you're going to take in order for you to get those 50 people in the room? Right. So you have your vision, you have your goals, you have your objective. The next thing you're going to do is think about, well, who are the people, you know, who are, who is my, my target audience, who, and your target audience, um, you know, like we'll hear people talk about, well, your ideal customer, um, it's not just your ideal customer, you know, it, within your business, Where are you they? should, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, you know, so who, so who, who is your target demographic? Because you might be an attorney, um, but you, but for this particular thing that you're thinking about doing, it might not be your um, established customers. You're trying to go after a new demographic. And, you know, maybe there's a myriad, myriad of services that you offer. And one of them, might, might one might be real estate law, you know, when you mean law firm. I don't know how law firms work. Mm-hmm. I'm just throwing some things right. out here. So don't, so, so don't be like, no, we don't do that. I'm just throwing some things out right. here, for, for example, <laughs> right? So maybe you offer, immig- you offer real estate law and you offer immigration law within your law firm, right? But you're not going to put the immigration and the, uh, and the, the um, real estate within the same bucket. So who are you going to go after? You're like, okay, I'm going to talk about, you know, um, immigration law here. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so, so that means that you need to find the specific topic demographic that's going to be interested in whatever the topic is that you're going to be covering here. Mm-hmm. Just pick out one of your, one of your, 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 your target demographic. It's not going to be all of them. Right. right? It's not going to be all the people that you serve all the time. It's just going to be one specific person that you're talking to. So think about who that person is. What is it that that person needs? And then that becomes your event promise, right? Mm -hmm. So now you're going to say, all right, so when I think of this person, what does this person need to know? Maybe Mm -hmm. they're struggling with 
um, how to get their green card. You're struggling with how to become a citizen, right? Um, so now you can flesh out your content based on this particular person. And then you can specifically say, this is my event promise. If you come to this workshop that I'm doing, you're going to learn the pathway to citizenship. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're going to get your documents done. X, Y, Z, all of the other things that you um, are going to have as a part of your event, right? Right. Um, and then from, so now you have the meat and the bones of what your event is going to be. Mm -hmm. Now you can go into, well, what is the budget for me doing this? And then that, from from there, now you can start looking for venues. You can think about, oh, then you want to have a speaker. You know what I mean? Yeah. But from like, from a just starting out, starting out, like not want to overwhelm yourself, not even getting out into the streets of anything yet it's the vision it's it's going to be your vision it's going to be your goals it's gonna goals. Be your objective it's going to be who's who's your target demographic and and what is your event promise and then and then you'll work yeah. on your budget and you go from there okay i'll say good that that's tips. the easiest <laughs> good tips <laughs> and i actually i actually signed up for your um your i think it's a five-step um guide the, oh I, yes the diamond in the rough guide yes, yes. diamond in the rough mm -hmm. guide so i'm gonna actually suggest that people actually do this because natasha goes deeper into these steps you know for creating your first event and and future events you can use use it over and over again mm -hmm. um there is um email information and there's video uh she does this a really fantastic job at, with a, a a pdf guide you know and um we're gonna have Natasha tell us, you know, where we can actually get more of this information from in a moment, you know, but the final question that I have for you, Natasha, is this, is that, you see, this is the Guiding Brands podcast. I'm the chief guide and everybody that comes on this podcast is a guide themselves. So today you're the events guide, <laughs> you know, so what would you say right now, if you could, if you could tell you know the audience anything as it relates to events and marketing if there's anything else or anything you want to emphasize that you mentioned before um or anything that's going on in the event world right now that people should be aware of you know what what would you like to to share with them as as today's guide <clears throat> as today's guide and i love that number one because <laughs> every time when i think about my uh my clients i always think about it like two clients and it comes from the hero's journey yes. that joseph campbell has so yes. um you know if you think so when you're talking about guide, and i always feel like that like i am a guide <laughs> yes um especially for people who are starting out um but in terms of just industry things that perhaps uh, we should be mindful of uh, right now what's happening as a result of covid it, you know I, I think for a lot of people after covid they're not going out as much they're being very selective about the events that they go to mm -hmm. so what i've seen what i've even what now I been, even even yes. now really yeah so what i've been seeing is that registrations are down um, okay. for events or even if it's a free event you know virtual or not um, it's not as high of a show up rate. Mm -hmm. um, so, so with that being said, my advice is number one, uh, and, and then three is is a gap that I see a lot of times with my client is that they have the vision and all those things that we talked about before, mm -hmm. but then they don't market the event. I see. Um, so my encouragement is, you know, if you're thinking about doing an event, think about well, will I show up to market the event? Will mm -hmm. I be posting the flight? Will I be doing the live? Will I be doing the story? Do I have the energy or capacity? Can I schedule those things out? Like that's a major component of, you know, really mm -hmm. having the impact that you want from the event. Or if you need to hire someone to help support you with the marketing efforts, right? Mm -hmm. um, so think about that part um, because right now it's a lot of it. It's a lot, a lot more people are doing events now. Mm -hmm. um, and yes. a lot of them are very similar. Um, so the other thing too, is that you want to think about, well, how can you differentiate yourself? How can you make whatever it is that you're doing different? Um, and for me, I feel that, um, the best way right now to get the, the, um, to get the best way right now to have the biggest impact is to make your events more niche, um, as opposed and, and doing smaller events mm -hmm. as opposed to, um, just saying, you know, just one blanketed thing, like right. 
entrepreneur summit. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, but but what but but making it more targeted. Uh, so maybe it's needs. like if you're <clears throat> if your target audience are dentists, you uh-huh. know, you know, um, marketing summit for dentists, or even more specific social media marketing or digital marketing or mm-hmm. whatever summit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Like making okay. it, making it more industry specific and more, mm-hmm. and more niche um, is, is so that when somebody sees your, your thing coming out, like they know, mm-hmm. Oh, that's for me. I yeah. need to be at that thing. Right. Cause they know that you're going to be specifically talking to them. Yeah. And I just had a thought too, because a lot of the people that listen to this podcast are actually service-based businesses. So yeah. they um, are AC repairmen um, or repair people, plumbers, um, property damage restoration companies, um, attorneys. Those kind, you know, they're service based. Mm-hmm. And um, what you, what they probably should do, based on the suggestions that you just gave, is think about your audience. Think about the mm-hmm. questions that you hear from your 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 clients all the time. The things that you're having to um answer over and over again and use that as the theme or the basis mm-hmm. for your um event and mm-hmm. um and and then you know that business of being more targeted and niched will actually benefit you yeah yeah I, yeah 100% yeah. 100% yeah. so so you know Natasha this is this was great i actually <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> i got some reminders for myself in terms of, you know, how to go about approaching my, my events and so on. And I really, really appreciate this. And I think, I think, you know, the audience is going to take away a lot from this and I want them to be able to use whatever resources that you have out there already, your podcast. So you just tell us all the things, where can they find you? Where is, you know, the name of the podcast again, the, um, that, um, free guide, you know, Diamond in the Rough. Talk a little bit about that, please. Um, so you can find me at the Diamond Butterfly on Instagram and Facebook. Um, you can also visit my website, thediamondbutterfly.com. And there you'll find the um, guide. It's called the Diamond in the Rough Event Planning Guide. And pretty much what I do in that is just kind of walk you through step by step. Um, if you're someone who's new to planning an event or um, you just want a new perspective on or a new perspective and approach, a more strategic approach on planning your event, then um, I kind of walk you through step by step with that guide. It's a PDF and it's also um, a video guide as well. Um, And there are some templates that you can utilize. So um, I hope that you can go ahead and register, uh, download that and let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, You that the podcast is called Event Gems, so it's eventgemspodcast.com. Um, and I think I pretty much covered it, but you can find everything <laughs> on my website, the diamondbutterfly.com, you know, mm-hmm. my YouTube podcast, the uh, freebie, um, and, you know, if you'd like to learn more about my services. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I thank you so much, Natasha. Again, um, this was this was great. You know, we started off with some tech issues, but we yes. overcame them. We and made we it. Said, we're going to do this. <laughs> we're going to do this. And we did. And, uh, and I'm so appreciative that you, you, you did that. We did. And we were having this, you know, we've had this conversation. Thank and, you so um, much, Karen. Yeah. Yeah. And I look forward to hearing the feedback from the audience and, um, you know, yeah. So Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks for joining us on this um, episode. And um, we hope that you got value from this, that you learned how events can actually be an important tool in your marketing toolbox. It's not for those people out there. You can host very small events or you can host very big ones. But as Natasha said, know what your goals are, You know um, who you're targeting, Um, make sure that you have a budget when you're planning all of this, even if it's for a simple online event, a budget could be just your, your, uh, time. It doesn't have to be a dollar spent, you know, yes, you have to set aside the time to do these things. So thank you again and, um, catch you next time. Thank you.